Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the brand new full release version of Mars Horizons. Special shout out to Arak Digital for sending me out a copy of the game today to play with you. Whew, we're going to get started on this uh, this bad boy. We played this uh, a while ago. They had like a little extended demo for us before, but this one, this is the full thing. We're going to explore space together, manage a uh, space agency, and uh, may RNG be with us. <laughs> All right, let's start a new game. Now we have five different agency uh, choices. And, you know, I mean... I'm going to do two playthroughs actually here. Uh, I'm doing one on YouTube and I'm going to do one on Twitch. So we're going to have com two completely different playthroughs going on simultaneously. And uh, I'm going to do two different space agencies with each one of those playthroughs. So uh, I'm thinking for the purposes of YouTube, I'm going with the good old US of A. But on Twitch, I think I might choose Japan just to see if it's how different it is. So uh, let's get started here with NASA. United States of America's civilian space program established to advance space, science, and technology. Achieving a top three milestone rank grants double support bonus. Three additional contractors are available once contractors are unlocked. And a total astronaut recruit pool, the size is doubled. Okay. We can also customize our agency if we'd like to. You'd be able to change the name and the flag and all this other stuff which is actually kind of cool um didn't know that existed before i began talking and now i'm thinking maybe we can rename it to whatever we want ah uh, okay uh no custom flags but you can change it to a variety of different flags here so that's kind of cool um I'm not sure which one I like more than the good old US of A. I think at this point, I'm just going to leave it as NASA. But uh, you can change this if you'd like to. And then you can also choose uh, a new headquarters name if you'd like to. So keep, keep that in mind as well. Traits. Bidding War for the Glory and Project Mercury. We can select new traits for our space agency as well. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Bidding War, Project Mercury. I, I mean... This pool being doubled, I don't know if that's necessarily better than, say, for example, 50% down construction time. That seems pretty powerful. Expansion expertise. Uh, vehicle build. Oh, negative on the 20 build time. That's probably better than the astronaut pool size, right? Probably. Goodness, I don't know. Double support bonus. Uh, three extra contract. <laughs> I'm tempted to bring down the number of astronauts and put in how fast we build. Vehicle build? Oh, not cost. No, no, no. Uh, not cost. Uh, time. Efficient assembly. Build time. That's payload build time. Uh, is there any vehicle build time? Uh, this is actually kind of cool. I didn't know you could do this. Um, vehicle build time right there. Huh. So we could have rockets out real fast this way. I think that's nice. We could beat people and get all those milestones. I'm going to go with this one instead. Bidding more of efficient construction and for the glory. Okay? So you have a slightly customized space agency. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and then diplomacy. So it looks like we're antagonistic to Russia. That makes sense. Friendly to ESA. Uh-huh. And then neutral China and uh, Japan. And that seems... That seems fair. That seems pretty on point. All right, let's go. Uh, so we're going to go with, looks like Explorer, Pioneer, or Veteran. So these are like your difficulty settings. And uh, I am going to just hit Pioneer because I don't know how many things they changed from the first time we played the game. They might have changed a lot of things. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with Pioneer it is, okay? Uh, and we can also customize our experience even further on this if, if we want to as well, including competition, number of resources we get, etc. All that stuff. That's kind of nice. Uh, okay, I'm good with this. Let's start the game. So, it says, Welcome, Director. The space race has begun. Staying ahead of the pack will require unprecedented feats of engineering. No shortage of daring. Your role is to develop our space program, leading us into orbit and beyond. Keep our agency at the forefront of space science and inspire generations to come with our triumphs. Humans will one day set foot on another planet. 
Make sure we get there first. Good luck, Director. All right, so same start as we had before, it looks like. Everything's in there, but there's all sorts of stuff popping up on the screen. Let's go talk about those things. First, we have our own research that we can set. Make sure we're always trying to move ahead in the scientific discovery. This is the solar system screen. It's our gateway to various aspects involving, uh, involved in running the space agency, such as accessing the research and base screens, selecting planets to discover, etc. I'm going to go ahead and just click ahead on that. Tutorial uh, rocket testing. Current tutorial objectives are here. Completing the task is a great way to get your agency up and running. Okay, good. Rocket testing. Got that. I know. Uh, selecting planets. I got that. I know. Okay. So, this is Earth. Okay. Earth is our friend. Earth is our is our is our home, right? And there are various other things other than Earth, but we can't go see them because we're kind of locked on Earth with, you know, the fact that we haven't really done any rockets yet. January 1957, right? Take a look at the research screen. We already have our mission test launch, and now we need to work on potentially getting our artificial satellite up and running. It says the research screen is where you can research new technolog uh, technology vital to progressing your space program. The screen is split into three research trees, missions, buildings, and vehicles. This is the mission tree, which contains the research necessary to unlock new missions and their respective payloads. Each tree is made up of nodes that represent certain technologies or uh, areas of research. These nodes will often require the completion of other nodes before they can be researched. For example, this one. So let's, uh, I'll, I'll look at this in a second. A certain amount of science to complete, you can be earned by missions and buildings. Okay, good. This is our era. We'll look at that after a while too. Uh, buildings trees are nice. We have different trees actually too. So what it's saying is basically we can't do this research until we've done this one. Also, we can't do this one until we've done this one. But once we've done this one, we can do either one of these. We just simply can't like do this one until we've got this one. I think that's what it's saying. Okay. Um, we have, of course, our era. And as we move through, we'll get to different eras. And all these eras are available to us now, right? Multi-planetary species, right? Oh, man. Look at Curiosity Rover. Oh, yeah. Mars surface habitat. Oh, this is nice. I like this. There's so much to do here now. This is going to be fun. You have the different trees of research. This is our building tree. So we can expand on our different buildings and how fast we want to do things, just like the demo. Uh, and then we have vehicles. And again, vehicle trees unlock new boosters for us and all sorts of things there. But right now, what we want to unlock is the uh, artificial satellite uh mission so i'm gonna go ahead and click that for now now this is kind of a turn-based game so you're gonna every month is a turn or you can zoom ahead and uh just zoom ahead to the next event that you have your events list is on the bottom right right now we are looking for our funding review comes up in 12 months this is an evaluation of how much money we're going to be getting uh over time every month currently we're making 53k we have 100k at our disposal we're gonna get 112 science per month which is nice. We also have a slightly a slight modifier because we're friendly with the ESA, so they're providing us a little bit of theirs too. And uh, this is our support. The more support we get, the more funding we can get. It's kind of like public support because we're NASA kind of thing. Uh, and then we also have different tiers of support, and we get our new funding tier at 150 support. Okay, cool. Take a look. Uh, if we had an active mission, we'd be able to see it here. This is our base screen, and uh, the base screen is really cool because I'm just going to get rid of all these because I know this stuff already. Base screen is nice. Whoops. I guess I don't know. Right click does that. Base screen is nice because we can organize and build out our own space station uh, exactly the way we want, our space program the way we want. This is a tile-based grid. In order to build in a certain spot, we have to clear it. And clearing it is very expensive. So you'll see that removing this obstruction is $75,000. This one here is one and a half million. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of flexibility to push things in. You're just gonna have to keep making money in order to be able to afford those things. We can build different uh, buildings and stuff here too. I'm gonna go ahead and disable some of these. I like the tutorials popping up because if there's something new that I haven't seen before, I want it to explain it to me. But the ones I know already, I'm just going to try and skip them. So right now, this is our headquarters. And we can go through different buildings if we had access to them. But we don't right now. All we have is the vehicle hangar, which we have already have. So we have, two, we have these two buildings. And each of these buildings also 
not not every single building does this but some buildings will have adjacency bonuses and you'll want to place buildings with similar bonuses next to each other to have them complement each other <clears throat> my voice is gone guys oh so much recording lately all right back out let's click earth so these are the various different missions that we have available to us right now and we can choose a variety of different missions i'm just gonna go ahead and skip all these I don't want to hit click disable tutorial because I'm not sure if it disables it completely from all things. So I'm just going to keep hitting that button for now. So many things, but they're all locked, right? Right now we can just do test flight. It gives us 100 support, which will bump us to 150 on the tier and the funding. And we get 250 science, which is great for us to, you know, explore for the next uh, mission that we're, that we're going to be able to do. Milestone rank. Uh, this is how well we do on the mission, basically. And uh, if we do gold tier, we get 50 support, silver tier, 20 support, etc. And this is how progressed other nations are at this task. So nobody's done this yet. And you get big rewards if you're the first to do something, right? So being first is a really important thing for this game when it comes to getting lots of funding and support and beating the Russians, okay? We're back to trying to beat the Russians. All right, so let's plan this mission. So to plan the mission, we need a launch vehicle first, right? So we're gonna select a vehicle for this. All we wanna do is build a simple sounding rocket. And right now, we don't really have a whole lot of options on how these sounding rockets work, per se. We can rename them if we'd like to, but we don't have a whole lot of options in terms of parts right now. This is the vehicle designer, where you'll be able to design the vehicle for your mission. Yep, different stages, and all the stats and stuff are displayed here. Very good. Launch pad requirement is not currently met. Sounding rocket requires a small launch pad. We don't have a launch pad. That's interesting. We can build the vehicle without the launch pad, but we'll need to build the launch pad in order to launch the vehicle. Okay. And then launch reliability is right here. This is the chance that it's going to blow up. Okay. Experimental vehicle, sounding rocket is very low. However, it will gain a large amount of reliability per launch, even if it blows up. So this is telling you that there's a pretty high chance this is gonna blow up. But even if it blows up, you're gonna learn something about it. Why did it blow up? What failure caused it? And that knowledge will help you build better rockets later that have higher reliability. So the more you use something, the more reliable it can get up to a maximum. I don't remember what that maximum is. I wanna say it's like 95% or something. Sounding rockets valid design. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna get 80K. It's going to take us two months. Sorry, it's going to cost us 80K and it's going to take us two months to build it. So that's what we're going to want to do here. Uh, once the vehicle has been constructed, you'll receive a construction report from your engineers. Yep. And there's sometimes things can happen while your engineers are building this rocket. And sometimes nothing, but sometimes there's a trait that pops up. It could be po positive or negative. And you don't know what that is until that rocket's built. So let's build the vehicle. And we're going to go to the solar system. All right. See, now we only have 20,000, right? That ain't a whole lot of money. Time to build a launch pad capable of doing it. So we're going to head on over to uh, research, I guess. I guess it wants us to do that first. Oh, yeah. It wants us to do this first. Okay. We'll change the research then. Uh, I, I figured we already had the launch pad in, in tow. I guess I didn't notice that it wasn't there in the in the... HQ screen. All right, so we're going to get the launch pad, and that's only one month build time. It's going to cost us 50000 to build it, 5k a month upkeep. But we want to progress forward so that we can do that now. So here you can keep track of the resources vital to your space agency. I, don't, I know this already. And we're almost done with all the tutorials that are going to uh, be repeating themselves. Now, Spacepedia, this is a screen where you can learn a lot about all sorts of stuff. You can learn about different agency that, you, that you've that you met or that you know of, the different rockets you have, uh, the solar system that you are, and you can read up all about these types of things. So there's lots of like little reading material in here that'll like cue you in to the science behind some of these things and the stories behind some of these things. All right, so let's progress to the next month. Launchpad research is complete. And now we can go ahead and build it. I have 73K. So we want to go ahead and build that launch pad. Now the launch pad, obviously you can imagine the launch pad is a fairly large uh, building here. So we're going to build this and kind of place it wherever we want. As soon as this tutorial stops 
bugging me. Get out of my way. All right, so we can place this kind of wherever we want. And uh, if we place it right next to this building, you're gonna notice that we get a payload reliability penalty for this. Uh, but we also get a 2% vehicle build time uh, neg uh, bonus, right? Negative 2%. So it will be able to build it 2% faster, basically. Um, so I would wanna build this next to this building to get this this bonus, but I don't want to build it too close that it gets uh, hit by this one. So I think I'm actually going to build it on this side because I think there's another structure that might go well here. I might be wrong on that, but we'll uh, we'll see. Um, I might build it. Eh, yeah, yeah, I mean, eh, I think it wants me to. I'm going to build it here. I was like, I, I think it wants me to build it here, but I'm going to build it here. Small launch pad is now constructing. Once it's complete, you'll be able to launch your first rocket. Cool. So now we get the uh, the nice hand-drawn art of the uh, construction of this building. Very cool. And uh, now we need new research. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Small launch pad's done. I still think I want artificial satellite as a mission. Maybe we get some different vehicles, though, instead. Or the research lab. Yeah, the research lab. Um, this is a building I think I probably can't build until I clear out some things, though. Assembly facility will decrease, I think this, uh, oh, payload reliability training. Yeah, that might be good. Um, we're a little bit far away from needing, um, I, I was thinking about, like, um, the astronauts. I think we're a little bit too far away from... From that but this doesn't look like it's for astronauts this looks like it's for actually building the rockets if i remember so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with this because we're gonna be going to space later and um this is a three month build time on that although if i unlock the vehicles i might be able to actually achieve orbit right kind of important maybe we'll do the vanguard instead let's do the vanguard instead so we'll focus on a vehicle next month launch pad is complete can now launch small vehicles and our vehicle that we've been building is now done so test launch vehicle complete its name is nemesis it's gonna have no effect but its launch reliability is 25 percent okay high chance of failure launch preparations so this is the final stage of the mission plan it involves assigning crew deciding on a, on a training program and setting the launch date if this is an uncrewed mission, no uh, crew needs to be assigned. Training is also locked until we have the appropriate buildings constructed for it, which is what I was about to research, but I'm not going to do that now. Uh, all the remains is set to all the important launch date for the mission. Now, the launch date is not like something that just you just get because launch dates can have suboptimal or completely impossible conditions to them. And certain space agencies have bonuses to this too. For example, Russia has a thing, which I'm very jealous of, where if it's uh, a no-go day, it becomes a suboptimal day instead. So Russia can technically launch on any day if they're willing to take the risks for it. Us, on the other hand, we're looking for green days as much as possible. And every day, per se, in the calendar is a whole month. <clears throat> so a whole month. So right here, we have optimal conditions, and we're going to have optimal conditions for several more months. But uh, that's for this particular rocket. So we're going to go ahead and select this date. And we're going to launch it as soon as possible, basically. So let's confirm the mission. Launch is approved. Good. And uh, we have research going. We're going to be fine with that. Let's go to the next month. Vanguard research is complete. And now we've reached era one, the dawn of space flight. Rocket technology advances. So does the prospects of exploring beyond the confines of our planet. Yet the public continues to question whether the fledgling agencies can overcome the dangers of spaceflight. We're going to prove those naysayers wrong. Well, 25% chance to prove them wrong. <laughs> Let's go. 25%, guys. This is why I said at the beginning of the video, may RNG be with us. All right. So this is a good day, nice, sunny day. Not going to have to deal with any weather, which is great because weather has a unforeseen adverse effect on our craft so looks like all conditions are nominal today conditions are going to up our reliability by 10 percent so it's going to give us a 35 percent chance to have something good happen <laughs> uh, so we have 16 percent chance of critical failure a 
basically 50-50 chance of a negative event happening. And we have 26% of launch success with a 9% chance of like a crit success. Like a really good thing. Like, wow, that was better than expected. 9% chance. Let's go. Five, so four, it's probably going to blow two, up. That's what we're saying. One. Probably going to blow up. I don't have my hopes very high. We have lift off. Do we now? Do we have explode explodes? Oh, look at that. It's actually successful. How about that? That's cool. All the way up to the crit success. Wow. This game likes me. Positive, smooth takeoff. We get 50% bonus mission reward on science, which is huge. Oh, yeah, man. That's good. Now, our sounding rocket also becomes more reliable because of our results. So, it's going to go up plus 15%. Because we're learning things, right? Milestone achieved. Test launch done. We are first to do that. So we get an additional support, which is going to also kick us up to a new tier of support uh, later on when it's evaluated. So there we go. Very cool. All right. Congratulations on completing your first tutorial objective. Your test launch was resounding success, granting your agency valuable support in science. Very good. Next tutorial objective involves achieving a crucial milestone for your space agency, placing your first artificial satellite in orbit. Okay, good. We're going we're gonna to work on that. But we have a Vanguard vehicle available to us, as well as some other stuff too. And uh, I can also incorporate some boosters here if I want to as well. These are upper stage stuff. This is lower stage stuff. And I, th I can get this. But I'm kind of tempted to go after the research lab. Let me see what kind of missions are available for starters. I want to. Can I? Active missions. Uh, also, there's a diplomacy screen. You can see how uh, much each agency likes us and dislikes us. Depending on your reputation with an agency, the relationship can range from allied to antagonistic, can be earned and lost through joint missions and certain events. Each relationship, apart from uh, neutral, grants bonuses to your agency. Friendly and allied relationships boost science income and increases other agencies' joint mission contributions. Completing, competing and antagonistic relationships boost funds income and reduce other agencies' joint mission contributions. So if we have an antagonistic relationship with another agency, we might get more funds. Our p people are like, okay, give them more money so we can beat them, <laughs> right? It's, it's more competition that way, right? So that's what we want to do. Um, now, I want to also look at something here. And it looks to me like I didn't, my, my agency bonuses did not change. I don't know if that's a bug or if I didn't hit confirm. It's possible I didn't hit confirm. I, I don't know. Um, but it says our agency bonuses are three additional contractors. Achieving the top three mile rank uh, doubles the support bonus. And the total astronaut recruit pool size is doubled. I thought I removed this one. And put to put the build time in place, but I apparently didn't. So okay then. I guess we know that now. For research, um, I could go for this one. It would take uh, how much? Two months. Like two months to research this one. To where I can get the building done. Uh, mm, I think I, I want to say faster. Yeah, right away. I can get research lab done right away. Research lab and greatly improve scientific yields from missions, which is what I really want. So uh, we're going to go with that, I think, for the time being. Next month, this lab is complete. Let's go ahead and take a look. And with the lab done, I think I want to go and get uh, maybe the Jupiter booster. 75, 65. Um, you know, reliability per level goes up. Algol will be more... I think Algo will end up being more reliable over time, right? Launch pad required is small. This one's cheaper to build, too. And we want to be able to get into orbit like that, right? So a powerful early liquid fuel rocket. Oh, this one's a this is a booster, but it's liquid fuel booster. So liquid fuel or solid fuel boosters. I mean, this this one here looks like it's gonna become more reliable over time. And this one is kind of, uh, it starts at 75, so it starts 10% more reliable than this one, 
but it only gets 1% more every level up to where this one costs less to build and becomes more reliable over time, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think I'm going to go with... Probably we'll need an upper stage too, but we're going we're gonna to go with this one for now. Let's take a look at the uh, base. So I wanted to build the science lab. It's 100K, which is what we have. And uh, to build that, it takes three months. And is there any way to build this? Um, like this. So we get two adjacency bonuses by placing this here. And uh, what I get is negative 2% um, vehicle, uh, vehicle build cost and negative 3% payload build cost. So it just removes my cost or brings down my cost overall by having both of these adjacency bonuses in this spot. I'm going to build that. And this is going to help our scientific research moving forward, which is good. The earlier you can play science buildings, in my opinion, the better because you are uh, exponentially increasing things over time. It snowballs to the... Uh, to the future to where it was like it, it's sort of like uh investing in a 401k or in a roth ira or something right the earlier you put the money in the bigger that pool gets later so uh there you go a little tidbit there you probably should start if you haven't started already you should start <laughs> take a look we get moon we get access to the moon now we can take we can click that we can learn about missions that go to the moon we are obviously way too early to go to the moon at the moment since 1957 uh, but we might be able to check out some new missions that are here and we were first to do the test launch i don't think doing it again is gonna do anything for us so we don't have any requests so i think we just need to wait until we have the artificial satellite uh task uh ready to go and i think for this um i wanted to wait till i had the payload but i'm not sure i need it now not sure I need, I, I mean, I think I do, because it says this is uh, capable of launching payloads into low Earth orbit, but so is this. Small liquid fuel rocket designed for basic satellites. Yeah, yeah, so I think we should probably hit this instead for this month. Yeah, let's let's hit the mission so that we can get become first to do that too. Artificial satellite research is complete, and uh, now we can go to Payload Explorer. Yeah, let's, let's hit this payload explorer here. Small, simple satellite capable of transmitting basic scientific data back from space, which we want to do. We really do. We really want to do that. Uh, take a look at our base. Not quite done yet. It's going to take a little bit of time. And uh, we don't have any active missions because we need to have payload explorer done. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Okay, one more month and we should be done. Yep. And also we get additional science. Now, test launches have just been completed by the ESA and Japan, so they are second and third, which means Russia is slacking. Oh, I love it. Good. Now that the artificial satellite mission and payload are researched, you can start the mission plan, which is nice. We're going to be doing that later. But in until then, I don't think we should handle these. I think we should go for, I want to say spacecraft assembly, because then we get the payload reliability training, and that is massive. Um, but I also don't have a whole lot of room to build that. So for the time being, I think I'm going to go after... Let's go after this solid fuel booster for now. And um, we're going to take a look at artificial satellite as a mission. 400 science from this if we get it, and 150 support when we get it. We're already at the next tier of funding, but we don't get that tier until our funding is reevaluated at the end of the year. So we, if we can get ourselves to tier three right now, that would be kind of cool. So let's plan this mission. First, we need a payload for the mission. So we're gonna have to design that payload. And right now we have various different things we can do for this. Um, I'll go through all of these things for you myself. So this is our Explorer. We can outfit the Explorer with various different equipment if we'd like to. These have positive and negative effects. For example, this, We'll have improved communication modules, and you'll see what those are in, in a bit. We have prototypes, which will reduce our build cost. And this is a power module, which increases how much power we have, but you can see the trade-offs for these two, right? One reduces our payload li reliability. That's gonna suck. Uh, payload reliability is massive on these missions. And this one increases our cost. Now, I kind of like this one. More power leads to a better chance of success. Uh, increased build cost kind of sucks, but um, it's 50k, and I actually have enough to afford this. 
I'm going to go ahead and pay that. I'm going to get the power module and pay that because I want this first mission to be great. I want to be the best. However, if I select this, I won't have enough money for the launch vehicle. Uh, yeah, I won't have enough money for the launch vehicle. The extra two power, though. The first puzzle has got to be possible without this. Let's just go standard. The first puzzle, come on. I can't fail the first one, right? Like they do with vehicles, your engineers will deliver a construction report on the payload once it's completed. This can include traits that may affect your choice of vehicle design in the next stage. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit this vehicle right here. Hit, uh, build the payload. Go to the solar system. All right. And now we're just uh, waiting for that all to be built. Yep, that's the wait. That's the waiting game. And we're going to also end up getting our booster. China actually failed their test launch. Most likely Russia did as well. Remember, it's like 25, 35% reliability and stuff, right? So the chance, good chance that Russia tried to launch one too, and it just failed. And so they weren't able to do it. Although I believe the mission was to just launch your test rocket, not to actually make it successful. I don't know though. China proposes research exchange. Uh, they've proposed an exchange of technology research. They are offering to share their rocket test pad research. If your agency shares its research on the research lab, accepting the offer would unlock the research rocket test pad. Um, you know, like they want to progress towards the research lab. That's like, that's cool for them. Um, rocket test pad research isn't something I'm necessarily going to want to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and reject that for the time being. We're going to lose a little bit of reputation with China, but that's okay with me. As is China. Payload completed. All right. Uh, a necessary redesign of the payload's power systems will greatly simplify launch vehicle requirements at the cost of reduced scientific yields. We end up with negative 25% science reward from this now, but we're going to have also a uh, cheaper cost, I guess. So they, there's a couple things that have happened while we've been developing this. All right. So Explorer is going to have these traits. Let's design something. Uh, let's design something new. We need our upper stage. So let's select that. And right now we have none. Oh, I haven't done any research for that. We have to select the parts for this. No parts selected. Yeah. Uh, we need research in order to make actually have this happen. So we're going to have to go back out. Get rid of this. I'm going to have to go back out, guys. I can't build it just yet. For re Come on, stop it. All right, we're going to need to go to upper stage Viking first. And then this is our active mission. Now, granted, we've already made the upper stage, but we, we, we can put off on developing the lower stage. It's just we can only build one thing at a time like that, I think. So uh, build mission vehicle. Let's go next month. Now we got the Viking research. And uh, you can see that Japan is launching artificial satellite in eight months. So we can see... I think there is a past events. Here it is. You can We can see the progress of other people, right? China's going to launch their artificial satellite in 11 months. Uh, they're also launching their test launch in eight months. So they failed this. They're going to try to do that. Um, Japan is launching artificial satellite in eight months and ESA in nine months. If we want to be first to do this, we need to beat this. We need to do this in eight months or less. So got to keep that in mind on ourselves here too let's set our research and i'm gonna look for maybe doing uh you know do jupiter or able probably i want kind of want to do able but it's more expensive maybe the jupiter the two jupiters together might be okay but i like the i like able it's more expensive though we can grab that or we can do research on other buildings I think getting mission control would be nice, though. You know? Maybe we should have done that research. Because then we could have had progress already done on the rocket test pad. Basecraft assembly. Or we can tack on this. Plus 50 per month. Uh, not lunar orbit. I'm not ready for the missions yet. Let's, um, let's go after the upper stage for the research. <clears throat> All right. So active missions. <clears throat> My voice is gone, guys. <clears throat> Active missions. We want upper stage. And now we have access to the Viking upper stage. So 
uh, small upper upper stage capable of lifting only basic satellites into low earth orbit and uh now we have upper stage selected we time to select a booster to carry it now we have a booster we've researched boosters so uh let's go ahead and select our new algo booster here and uh again i'm gonna i'm gonna explain these things to you over time uh, i do appreciate the pop-ups for the tutorials though and like i i have them on so that if there's anything new later they do show me but this is all very introductory stuff that i've done before so it looks to me like this one is cheaper and has basically the same launch reliability um so i don't think there's really any reason not to choose the lighter one personally so i guess we'll do that and this is called salamander i guess so all the parameters of the mission are met our booster is right there uh we have a small launch pad we're going to earth or it's capable of earth orbit and we get 15 kilograms of uh, upper stage weight there in our payload i mean so we're gonna have a total of 63 and 65 launch reliability and payload reliability uh and you'll see what those two numbers are as long as we can launch as long as the launch is successful you'll see what both of these are so uh here we go let's go ahead and uh we may have an unrevealed trade on this too let's build the vehicle back to the solar system and is there anything i don't think there's anything i can do right now research center is up and running though that's going to be nice for us let's go to the next couple months here vehicle is done and our current tier gives us 53k the next tier that we're going to gives us 79k so now we're going to get more money every month and if we can get our support to 400 then we'll get 105 per month so there we go our vehicle is also complete oh, i really hope it launches though that's going to be the thing because if it fails then we have to build it over again pay for it again and all that stuff um reliability will go up from us learning but the other space agencies are racing us remember so yeah let's do launch go to launch preparations and uh, we can do training now because i have the research center we can actually do training now we can focus on various different training aspects currently all we have the training access for is the um science training which will increase the science reward from it i would like to get to payload reliability and because that's that's my important one that's the one i think is most important um launch reliability in some cases is is more important too if your launch reliability is low and your payload reliability is already high um but as far as like in the future especially your payload reliability will have a much greater impact on your mission success uh in my opinion pending of course that you're actually able to get into space from there that's the only number that matters so yeah you kind of have to get it there before it matters but once you get it there uh that's what matters most in this case all we're going to be able to do is get um an additional science reward so how does the science reward work charlie well we're going to get a base amount of science for this reward but since we have science training we're going to get an additional five percent per month with a maximum bonus of 25 per month how many months well let's select a date so this is um this is hard because in order to launch um the current current training right we can launch in optimal conditions right here in february and this will just clear the board for us right now if we want to wait though we can get more science by waiting but we have to launch on the same day that japan does which means if we fail then japan beats us esa beats us china probably beats us right so we can be first to go here and if we're good we could be first we're only gonna get five percent bonus on science but if we wait we could we could take japan here and and be the same day as them here's the thing though if we choose february it may be suboptimal conditions anyway and we may not want to launch in february anyway we may have to postpone it anyway right i'm gonna select this because i want to be first uh but there's a chance we may not launch that day anyway so let's select the date we're gonna get an extra five percent bonus for the science so we're gonna end up with 320 science from this instead let's go ahead and confirm the setup and we need one month to do that of course because we're launching next month so this is a milestone challenge it's really important to get that let's go next month able research is now complete see we're ahead of everybody we really want to be there optimal date okay we're going to start with 65 percent reliability here 63 percent on the payload 
and 320 science if we're fully successful. So let's take a look and see what we're dealing with here. And it doesn't look like we have any rain or anything. That's good. Not raining. Not raining. It's still a chance of failure, though. 65% is no joke. It's... I mean, there's definitely a chance, right? But good conditions is going to bump things up even more. 68% chance of success today. Uh, and that's including both the 50% chance of launch success and a 17 I assume in a half or so percent chance of positive event. I'm not sure how your math from 50 to plus 17 gives you 68, but uh, I'm assuming there's some sort of like rounding going on there. Uh, and then we have 25 and eight. And again, I uh, add these numbers together, uh, they give you a hundred. So there must be some sort of rounding going on over here too. Uh, we don't want critical failure. That's 8%. But you know, this game is RNG. It's been known to happen before. It's been known to happen. 8% can definitely happen. Rock and roll. Here we go. We or it could be that 25% negative event, too, which will harm us in our payload. So we'll see. Don't do it. Okay, we have a launch. That's good. That gets us to stage two of this. Uh, and it looks to me like we got just a... Oh, okay, good. Just managed to secure... A regular launch, no actual mission effects, positive or negative, uh, beyond what was planned initially. We're also getting experience and reliability for the two vehicles uh, that are part of this launch. But now, we have the second half of this. And that is the artificial sa satellite in space part of this. So, we have a new task. We need to actually achieve orbit up here. In order to do that, we need to collect two communications modules and two data modules. Okay? Bonus objective if we can do three of each, I guess. So let's get started. So how does this work? Well, the tutorial will probably explain it to us. During the mission tasks, you will issue commands to the payload in order to achieve the task objective. Task objective is shown here. To successfully complete the task, you'll need to generate the required resources. Payload commands. These are resources that are generated via payload commands. Each command requires a specific input in order to generate output of resources. You'll only have a limited amount of commands per turn, so choose, choose each wisely. And there's a planning phase, uh, so you can freely undo and reselect things as you wish and try different combinations before you confirm them. When you're happy with your selected commands, select confirm commands to continue. Each command will be attempted by the payload in order to, they were selected with a chance of error based on the payload reliability. So this is why payload reliability is super important because even though I do something, there is a chance that it won't do it anyway. And that's based on my payload reliability. So there's a, a, a greater than 50% chance that we're going to succeed in each of these, but it's not great. 65% across the board on all of this stuff. So, so how do we do this? Well, we have power. Power is our resource we're gonna spend. Each command has an input and an output. You put something in, you get something out of it. So in this case, we want to get to we, we want to get to three of each of these modules if we can. We have two commands per turn, four turns remaining. Okay. So we can also just recharge power if we'd like to as one of our inputs. And we only get two inputs, right? Two commands. So we could, if we want to, to be successful in this, we could just hit these two twice and be successful in it. I think, um, but. We could also do something else. Like, for example, we could recharge power. And, oh, oh, you're not going to give it to me now. Interesting. Hang on. Oh, we don't have one of these. Right, right, right. Okay, let's um, undo. I want one of these. So we're going to spend power to get one of these. Then we're going to spend another power and that communication module we just got to get three of these. Okay. And that's our first turn. Confirm commands. No! See, I told you. Less than 50%. <sighs> this command output will be reduced by one communications module unless you spend one power to resist the event. I kind of need to resist this. So... You know, I might be able to make it work anyway. I need the power. I think I need the power. 
Let's resist it. I don't want to take a chance. I want that stuff. Oh, right. We, we absolutely needed to do that. And we have to resist this one, too, because I need those modules. Damn, dude. We're going to lose all the power. That sucks. <laughs> Two failures. Welcome to the game, guys. <laughs> Two failures. So we don't have any power. So we're going to have to recharge power as one of our actions, which is kind of that kind of blows. Uh, we can then use that power on one of these, or I can just hit recharge power twice, which I kind of need to do, I think. So... Critical failures, man. God, that sucks. Let's just recharge our power for a second. Two turns remaining. Now, the good news is I've already satisfied this requirement. I just need to get to this one, which is easy to do by just clicking this. So this will give us two and two, which is nice. I kind of wanted the bonus objective, though. And I do have enough power to do that. Um, so I think what we'll do is as long as this is successful, we'll have enough power to go ahead and do it another time and get the bonus reward, which is kind of what I want to do. Um, yes. And now I'm trying to think if that's what I want to do. I think it is. Maybe I should do it now. I think I should do it now. We'll get this, because we had the whole turn. So this will bump us. If both are successful, this will bump us to getting three of these. Come on, be successful. Yay! We're good. And then the final one. Come on now. Yeah, there we go. Almost gave me that bonus. It is. Give me the bonus. Get an additional two of these suckers. That's awesome. So we're successful here. We can go for the bonus if we want to. Meeting these requirements before your turns run out will be challenging, but doing so will result in substantial rewar rewards boost, which we can do easily because all I need to do is do ground control. And now we can bump these up. And the really cool part is, even if we fail, it'll probably only take away one of those modules when we fail, which is fine by me. Uh, as a security measure, we can also spend an additional power to secure that if that other one fails. So let's run that. So that's going to fail. What's the downside of that failure, though? So we're going to end up costing an additional one of these. Which I actually don't want that to happen, so probably should resist this. It's gonna cost us two. Yeah, that, that kicks us down to having two of these instead of three, so we need to resist this. We'll spend that extra power to resist that one. So that's it. Successful mission with the bonus objective. Isn't that nice? Artificial satellites done. And the bonus objective should give us what now? Extra science. There it is. And then, uh, yeah, we got the achievement for the space age, too. That's kind of nice. With your artificial satellite safely in orbit, you've achieved a major milestone for your agency and opened the door to launching more complex payloads. Perhaps even those that could carry humans into space. Who knows? The possibilities, guys. The possibilities. Uh, all right. So this is the first video for our new Mars Horizon playthrough. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. If you could give this a like and comment down below and interact with the video, that would help the YouTube algorithms uh, find it well and help other people find the videos too. We have lots more videos for this game to come. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one, guys. Thank you. Bye.